Hi, this is Paula from CHE. Here's our weekly segment with Cape Breton Council MP Mike Calloway. Today we talk about the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, seniors, and social assistance. Here's our conversation. Do small companies employing family members, um, can they apply for the wage subsidy? Yeah, so this is one that um, we talked about gaps in the system, and I think we've identified one, and particularly for the fishery. A lot of, a lot of family work within the fishery. So uh, we are actually um, working on that as we speak, and I literally mean as we speak. My staff is working with some finance people in Ottawa uh, to, to look at um, ways by which, if not the current measures that are uh, at the wage subsidy, that provide the wage subsidy, uh, some soon to be new measures that will be added to um, uh, uh, the existing measures to help fishers in particular and seasonal workers that may have a business that have people in their family working on it. So right now it's kind of gray with respect to that. So we want to take the grayness and make it crystal clear. So that is literally being worked on over the past couple of days to fix. So at the moment, I guess it's a no. At the moment, it would be a no. Uh, it would be a no, uh, but with a, an asterisk to say that uh, uh, all MPs have recognized that there's a lot of different types of seasonal work in particular that have, uh, you know, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers working on it, and, uh, and in particular in the fishery, to be honest with you. So um, literally right now at the time of this taping, my executive assistant is working with finance to provide them uh, hopefully will be a made in Cape Breton solution for Canada. Hopefully uh, we'll get some updates soon, maybe in a future interview. Yeah, I think by the time we have our next interview, we should have something to report on that. And um, I mean, that's the expectation and we're setting that goal that within the next you know four or five days at the max, we would have um, some announcements, uh, some announcements around the fishery in particular. The fishery, as you know, all too well. Um, we are um, number one issue in, in the in, in right now in the constituency has been for some time. Uh, we're up to about 80 meetings now over the past six weeks with fishing associations and organizations and individual fishers, uh, harvesters, uh, and the like. Um, and uh, I think we're very close to be announcing something uh, now. Again, the second question would be, well, what what is the announcement? What's it going to entail? Um, and, you know, um, again, our recommendations have been the same and, and we've un been unwavering on those recommendations around uh, support for fisheries who can't fish for health, and, uh, health, health and economic reasons uh, to ensure the wage subsidy uh, is connected to uh, owners, operators, things of that nature. Uh, flawlessly, uh, very, very uh, quickly to get that money to them, whether it's in existing measures or something that may come from a COA uh, through through monies that were announced a couple of weeks ago. And the other thing is, um, it's been on my mind a lot. I know it's on the minds of fishers and the families. Number one is health. Uh, number two is, um, you know, potential markets. Right now, I think at the time of this taping, we're looking at I think the market value of lobster is around six dollars. That could have changed this morning. I don't know, but the potential for that to remain steady or to drop significantly is there because it's unpredictable. And we need to have measures in place similar to what we've uh, recently announced for agriculture uh, and farmers to be able to assist uh, farmers in this case, fishers. Uh, if the if the price of lobster goes down to $4 or $3, then you get into that situation where it becomes uh, economically challenging to make a profit, quite frankly. Uh, so those are the measures that we put in our package. And um, when the package is announced, we're gonna analyze what we've asked for and what's in the package. Uh, but what we've asked for is, when I say we, I mean the constituency. We've taken what the constituency uh, has said and presented it in, in a way uh, that has reached uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, um, the Prime Minister himself, uh, and, and Minister of Finance, and, 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 and of course, Minister of Fisheries. So hopefully in the next, you know, next couple of days, we'll be able to announce fishing measures and, and, and seniors. 
as well. Uh, measures for seniors to assist uh, seniors, which is another huge um, uh, area uh, that we need to um, come out with measures on. It's uh, within our riding, again, we have um, a large proportion of the electorate are, are seniors over the age of 60, 65. And, you know, when we first initiated and, and, and put out our measures, it was to help those individuals that overnight lost their income. Boom. They had nothing coming in. So, you know, we're working on that. That's evolving. Seven, no, eight million people have applied for the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. So that's eight million. That's huge. Uh, and over 200,000 uh, businesses have uh, utilized the, um, uh, the wage subsidy as well. So with that in mind uh, and trying to help people who lost income overnight, now it's absolutely essential that we address the senior issues because the seniors do have um, a basic income in essence, but what's happened, and, 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 and it's pretty clear what's happened. If you go to your grocery store in Shady Camp, or your grocery store in Canso, or Glace Bay, the, 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 the price of goods has gone up. And, you know, the allotment has remained the same. So we need to come to the aid of the seniors because they've done so much for us, for this country, for our region. And, and I'm hoping for some substantial measures to be announced in the coming days, uh, uh, for sure. That actually relates to my next question, which is, which has to do with groceries going up and also people buying the cheapest items. So people who are used to buying the cheapest items before because of low income, they don't have access to that anymore. Um, so this is a question that came from the community. Um, people have reported receiving about $50 every three months from social assistance, and that's it. Um, so they were wondering, um, how come there's, there's so many announcements for people, uh, you know, for employees, for business owners who already to begin with had more than them? Uh, how come not, there's not more being done for people with lower income? Yeah, so, I mean, it's a great question. So, I mean, in our riding and many ridings across the country, you have people that are um, described as, you know, working but in poverty or people that are um, not working on social assistance and have a certain amount of income and in, coming in from the government. And uh, it's challenging at the best of times now throw COVID on top of it. And it absolutely is even more challenging. So, you know, I go back to, you know, looking at this from, from a, the totality of the whole series of measures that have gone there today. So over the, now, this is a set, seven week, I think now, uh, in terms of governments responding to, to the crisis by the eight. So now we're at a point where you know, we're, we have to address these fundamental gaps. So it is a gap. Now, this is not just a federal government issue either. Uh, the provincial government when it comes to social assistance um, plays a fundamental role in, 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 the, in inevitably the funding and the distribution of that money and the oversight of that money. So this is what it's gonna require uh, federal there's some, there's some, I guess, jurisdictions that are uh, either one or the other, or they cross. In social assistance, it, they tend to cross from time to time. So this is where the provincial government and the federal government have to sit down and look at what are the proper measures to assist those that are um, on social assistance. So your question is, why no support for them? Yeah, and I would say, um, you know, with, and I know it's hard because number one, there's anxiety with this, number two, uh, there's worry, and it's all real. And to, to, to the point earlier, prices are going up on everything. So we're looking at it from a federal perspective. I know the provincial government is looking at it. Uh, we have to come to the uh, to kind of like a, a meeting of the minds in terms of collaboration to identify what measures should go up that are provincial and what measures should go up uh, that are federal. But so I don't have an answer for you yet, other than it is absolutely on our, our not just on our radar. These are conversations that are happening with finance federally and probably have no doubt having and finance provincially. So we got to get to a point where we can get money out the door for those individuals like seniors, which is coming, like fishers, which is coming. Uh, and my hope is that, you know, in due course, there'll be some supports there to assist those individuals to get a, a bit of a top up, much like those that are working in essential jobs that uh, are are so key to 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 the country's um, to the country's um, life cycle in general before COVID, and now you have uh, essential workers that uh, are more important than ever 
those that are CCAs, LPNs, you know, we've introduced uh, our measures to work with the province to top their salary up uh, because of the importance of them getting, getting a bump for obvious reasons. Same goes for uh, income assistance. Um, you need money to live, and if, you, and if the money you're getting is not keeping at par with the standard of living, uh, or, or it's just not aligned at all because there's a spike because of a crisis, you know, the government of Canada will be there, but this is also a responsibility of the provincial government as well to be able to fund it. And I don't, all, I don't subscribe to the whole, this is a jurisdictional thing, all that we're all Canadians, we're all uh, Cape Bretoners and Northeastern Nova Scotians. I, I know my background is, is working with community agencies and groups to help uh, those that are on income assistance. So it's near and dear to my heart. It's one that we're, we're working on again with, with cabinet ministers and whatnot, but nothing to announce yet, but it is being not just discussed, but you know, all of these major demographics are being looked at and how you can get money up the door quickly, but to do it in a way um, that is responsible, uh, that is um, not just responsible in terms of the humanistic perspective, but also the fiduciary perspective as well. So um, that, that will come. I know it's not soon enough and I feel for everyone that is on income assistance and because uh, uh, I've worked with many uh, and, uh, and, but we'll, we'll, we're going to get there. We're going to get there together. You can send us your questions for Mike Kellaway at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.